Hi, my name is Robert Bolaños. Welcome to uh, part two of Power MOSFET Switching Characteristics. Okay, the last uh, couple of months I've been working on high speed uh, MOSFET designs and uh, I'm dealing with higher and higher voltages and also higher switching speeds. So in the past I've learned how to uh, simulate them and uh, characterize them a little bit better and I want to share some of my experiences with you guys that way you don't run into some of the headaches that I've been uh, running across okay so this is I guess the general statements uh, as far as when you're using a power fit you'll notice that when you're using a power fit most of your designs they need a resistor on the gate and if you ever wondered why what's the reason that you need a resistor at the gate and if you don't have a resistor you should see that your gate will ring why is that okay and if you do use a resistor, what values would you use? And then the last part that I want to touch base on, which is a very important subject, is the subject on voltage feed through. It's also called the Miller spike. And the Miller spike typically will hurt you, or you'll see it when you have a bridge circuit. In a bridge circuit, typically this will be on, and this will be on. So current would flow thus, and these would be off. Off. Okay. However, if you notice here, you have the drains are connected here. So when this turns on, this MOSFET will experience a high dB dt across the drain and it induces a spike on the gate. Okay. So I want to simulate that and show you how to handle that. Okay. So let's go with the simulation. Here's top spice. And this is, I believe, the model that I used on the first video that I did on uh, switching characteristics of MOSFETs. And what I've added here is seven nanohenries, and these would represent the inductance of your leads. Okay, let's say if you're using a TO222 leads if you look at the spice model or even the data sheet they'll say that the leads are about seven so what I did is I, I went ahead and modeled them in this little circuit and I'm using this source as my gate driver and this could be a MIC let me write down the number uh, there's an, a CMOS driver called the MIC 4422 so we can say that this mimics that and the output impedance of the MIG is 1 ohm okay so I'll put this as I'll put resistance okay so this is really what all you need to model a MIC4422 a resistor and a source that switches from zero that switches from uh, in this case I'm going from 10 to zero or you can flip it across and I have this uh, with a very high rise time of 5 nanosecond and a fall time of five nanoseconds okay so let's pretend that the only resistance in series is the output resistance and remember this resistance is part of the chip or it's inside the chip 
or the driver. So let's pretend that there's no, no connections in here, no resistors other than the output impedance. And if we run it, let's take a look at the gate. Okay, so now if we look at the gate, we can see that the leading edge has ringing associated with this. And in some cases, this ring may or may not exceed your gate maximum voltage. Okay, now this on most MOSFETs which have a maximum voltage of 20 it's not a problem but in some of the newer technologies like the EGAN uh, FETs they only have a maximum voltage of 7 volts and if you drive them you drive them with 6 volts so you only have 1 volt margin so if you have ringing more than 1 volt you're gonna pop the EGAN so you have to be able to control this Okay, so now let's take a look at this. Okay, let's examine this. And more importantly, let's examine the frequency. Okay, so let's measure the frequency. Okay, and let me turn this white because I think it white background it looks like uh you get slightly better information or looks a little bit let me expand this just to get maybe a better okay frequency so I'll put a cursor there cursor there approximately and it's 81 let's say 82 megahertz okay so let's write that so we'll say that F ring it's 82 megahertz okay so let's try and analyze what's going on okay so let's do a little small signal model Okay, and we'll put the output impedance, and we'll say that this is R out, and remember this is 1 ohm, and then the small signal model looks something like this, and of course we have the inductor, and we have an inductor. Okay, and just for completeness, let's draw this. So this is VGS plus negative. So this is the gate drain. Source. Okay. Okay. So this is providing a step function, and when we measure here, we get the ring. Okay. Now, anytime, this is probably the most important note. I'm going to put note. Okay, very important. Anytime you see any type of ringing, associated with, let's say, a step function or 
any type of ringing whether you you start seeing some ringing where it's oscillating the first thing that you should always think is that you have a L C network okay that's the first thing you should always think so as soon as you see something like that you say you should think ah I got an LC circuit somewhere okay and by the present fact that is doing this it's a decaying ringing function means that you have a little bit of uh, power loss or dissipation Dissipation. Now, if you didn't have any power dissipation, then instead of having a, a decay, and let's say if it was a lossless LC circuit, well, if you don't have any losses, then that ring would go on forever, and you basically you have an oscillator. Okay, but in this case we don't have an oscillator. We have this, and basically that's what we have. We have a ringing, an LC circuit, and a little bit of a uh, power dissipation. Okay, now if you look in here, if you notice this is in series with this uh, CGS. This is CGS, and this is CGD. But when you, this goes from 0 to 10 volts, you have displacement current that f actually flows through here, through the cap. Now, remind you, there's no DC current. It's AC current. And, this, and AC current is called displacement current. So always keep that in mind. So you do have current, okay? So if you have this current, that means that it's going through these two inductors, okay, in this cap, okay? And from our previous simulation, we can always look at the output file, and we can look at what is our CGS, what is the value of that CGS and we go to the output file right here and if we look for CGS o OVL it says 245 to the tenth power it's actually 245 pico so let's go ahead and write that down okay So we're going to say the CGS is equal to 245 pico farads. Okay. So now, since we have two resist, no, two inductors, and remember, this is the lead inductance. So if it rings then you should be able to predict that frequency by using this formula and let's say this is L1 and this is L2 so we can say L1 plus L2 times CGS okay so let's go ahead and plug that in put some numbers and it'd be 14 Nando Henry's times 245 picofarads 
Okay. So let's see what kind of numbers we get. Finally, the calculator opens up. Okay. So we can say, oh, forgot to put the square root. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's do one divided by. 6.28 is 2 pi. It's a, it's a close approximation. 14 nano times 245 pico, close parentheses, raised to the 0 0.5, close parentheses. And I get. 685 85 megahertz well that's what we got in our simulation okay so that's how that's how you determine the frequency so you just add up the two two inductance and find what your capacitance is and you're done okay so what can we do about it I mentioned that you can uh, add a resistor okay well right now we do have a little resistor but it's not enough okay and the R gate typically to make sure that you're damped and we'll call it Z damp is determined by this formula which is L divided by CGS so in this case we got 14 nano Henry's and 245 pico farads so let's see what kind of resistor do we need to keep it from ringing okay so we'll say that it's uh, 14 nano divided by 245 where is it pico close seven point five seven point five ohms okay so to properly damp the ringing we need seven point five ohm resistor so let's see if it works okay so I'll go ahead and put another resistor here and we'll set it to 7.5 okay and before I do that I'm gonna save this I'll save okay so now let's go ahead and simulate So now let's compare. And if you notice, the ringing is gone. Okay. So let's go ahead and recall the previous one. See the difference? There. So you can see the difference. Okay. Now, here's another point that I want to add 
and see if you can see the uh, secondary effect of adding a resistor at the gate. So anytime you add resistance in the gate, okay, remember the switching is determined on from the last previous video, the switching speed is determined by the Miller cap and remember uh, that the switching is determined also by the resistance that's in this path so if we want to switch fast you want this resistor as low as possible okay but the lower we make it then we start having ringing and as we increase it it slows you down so let's look at that so this is when it was ringing when the only resistance there was 1 ohm and if you notice the slope is much faster but it had ringing but now that we have a properly damped gate you notice I lost switching speed it has uh, the slope has uh, has increased or elongated so your switching time has slowed down okay so that's one of the things that you have to be aware that uh, you may have to make a little compromise you want a, a well behaved gate and if you can tolerate a little bit of ringing then you're allowed but if it's too much or you don't have enough marching in your gate then you may have to damp it and operate it at a, at a lower speed okay so that's that as far as regarding these three uh, why we need the resistor uh, why does the gate ring with no gate explained it and what value okay so now let's explore a little bit this last part voltage shoot through okay now Typically, you'll see that when you have two transistors. But I'm going to, instead of having two transistors, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate it a little bit different. I'm going to switch this voltage instead. In other words, this voltage source will be delayed. Okay. And typically, this transistor would be off so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off okay so basically the transistor is off there's no gate voltage and then I'm gonna slam this on very fast which is typically what's gonna happen in your gate in other words this would be off and then this turns on and it slams this voltage this drain straight up to VDD in this case I'm slamming it the gate from 0 to 250 volts okay and I want to show you the the shoot through okay let's look here there's a shoot through so if you notice the voltage at the drain that's provided by this resistor shot up from 0 to 250 in 1 nanosecond basically and remember the gate driver is off but then you have the spike why and where does this spike come from and keep in mind the threshold voltage of most power MOSFET is about 3 to 4 volts so you actually are turning this MOSFET actually this MOSFET is actually being, turning on, uh, being turned on when you have a high DVDT voltage it's actually turning on 
and you can tell because if you notice the voltage just goes straight up instead it's got this little slope because it's drawing current or the MOSFET is drawing current okay so let's let's take a little look let's go back to our modeling so we can see this a little bit better see what's happening I'm going to use color green okay so I have my 1 ohm resistor and then I have my R gate which is 7.5 and let's go ahead and put the inductor and we'll have our CGS GM VGS and in this case let me add let me change this color right here because this is important okay again remember the capacitance from the gate to drain that's called the Miller cap very important this determines your speed how fast your drain is going to be switching okay so let's see what's happening okay so small signal model my driver is off if it's off it's actually sinking current so it's actually a switch so that's grounded okay so now the drain is at zero and then all of a sudden it goes very fast in one nanosecond goes all the way to 250 volts so from zero to 250 volts so what happens okay change color here so as this is going up this is is basically at a ground potential that node but this is going from 0 to 250 so you actually have current displacement current going through the Miller cap through the resistor in this direction okay and when you have current in this direction then since you have this resistor then the polarity of the voltage drop will be in this direction okay hopefully that makes sense so when this goes up your gate voltage will see a blip like that which is due to the Miller cap okay okay so let's see if we can maybe calculate that a little bit we can look here it looks like it's CGD it's 15 pico okay so let's calculate CGD 15 picofarads so let's see what kind of current we would get so will we use this equation 
dt. So we know that it's 15 pico. And this cap is seeing a delta V of 250 volts. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, let me re redo this, uh, make it a little bit more realistic. Let me make sure that I'm going to be switching from 0 to 250. And rise time of 1 nanosecond, that's probably not realistic. Um, perhaps even 10 is very fast. So let's go ahead and change the rise time to 10 and the fall time to 10. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll go ahead and uh, simulate. Okay, there you go. So let's go ahead and look at the simulation and at uh, see if we can get both of these. Okay. Okay. So right here, you can see that the drain is swinging from zero to 250 volts. And that's because the power supply is swinging. And basically, you can think of it if you have a bridge, the top MOSFET is turning on. Okay, so that's what the, the, the step function at the drain is trying to simulate. And if you'll notice here, it looks like you have close to 400 milliamps of current going through the dr uh, uh, the gate. Okay, and let's examine that a little bit. Maybe see if we can calculate that and see if it's in a comes in agreement. Okay, so basically we want to calculate this I gate. Okay. So the I gate is going to be C dV dt. In our case, we have 15 pico, and the delta is 250 volts. So that's the delta between right there. And since we're switching, with a slope of 10 nanoseconds. Okay, let's see what we get. Okay, so let's do 15 pico. times 250 volts divided by 10 nanoseconds so that should be 375 375 milliamps okay so knowing that then you should be able to calculate the voltage between here and your source gate drain okay I already have it there so that's going to be V gate is going to be the voltage drop across your gate resistor which is our gate so it's I gate Since your R gate, 375 milliamps times 7.5 ohms. Let's see what we get. 0.375 times 7. Point, about 
bolts. Okay. Okay, let's see how close. Okay, so 2.8 is around right there, that's close, and if you notice, uh, 375, 375 is right there, that's very close. So for all intents and purposes, it's a it's pretty, pretty good match, okay. So the problem that you can see, hopefully, if you notice here, let's measure the top. This voltage is 3.18, okay, and let's look at our schematic, let's look at the VGS, the threshold voltage of the MOSFET is 3.24, okay, so that means that during this time, that if you only go a tenth of a volt more, the MOSFET will turn on. Okay, and remember the MOSFET is supposed to be off, but it's turning on because the drain is turning it on. Okay, so that's that can be a problem, and this is definitely more of a problem if your uh, gate is slower. So let's so let's look at uh, this again. Okay. This voltage can be a problem. Let's see if I can fit this. Okay. So a little bit too much. Okay. So, the problem is this voltage, if it's larger, then your threshold voltage, means that you can turn on MOSFET on. Okay, so what's the big deal? Okay, so this is the big deal that I'm trying to make or convey. So if you have a half bridge, and remember, let's say this is 250 volts, okay, and you have this which is grounded. Okay. So this is supposed to be off. Okay. But then when this turns on, this thing is going to swing this node. That's the drain. This node is swinging very fast, up to 250 volts. momentarily or very fast in 10 nanoseconds okay and remember if it swings that fast this voltage because it has the 7.5 ohm resistor this thing goes up to 2.8 but let's say it goes up to 4 volts okay so that means that 4 volts is greater than the threshold voltage. Okay, so that means that this turns on. And what you have is you have cross conduction, you have current flowing directly between both MOSFETs. And depending on the, uh, the rating of your MOSFET, you might pop one of them. Or you might even damage your power supply because you're shorting your 250 volts 
through two MOF sets. Okay, so this is bad. Uh, another thing that they call it is they call it uh, shoot through. Shoot through, or you can call it uh, cross conduction. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, fortunately, there's a very simple way to fix this. Okay, since this is off and you got current, you have to somehow shunt the current or bypass it. Okay, so you want current to flow really well in one direction. Well, you want current to go through the resistor in one direction. But then when it comes the opposite direction, you want it to bypass. And one way of doing it is by uh, adding a diode. Okay. So in this case, let's add this diode here. And let's make it a shot key. An example of a shot key would be a IN 5819. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and run it. Okay. So now, see, the current is still about the same. Okay, went up a little bit, but if you notice, the voltage is no longer two, almost three volts. Now it's less than that. It's a little bit uh, just under one volt. And this will uh, prevent your MOSFET from turning on. Okay, well hopefully, I hope uh, all of this makes sense. If you have any questions, you can post them here on my uh, uh, video channel or you can email them to me and if time permits I'll try to answer uh, all of your questions you may have. Alrighty, well thank you for watching appreciate it uh, you stopping by and watching the videos.